Hey everyone and welcome to week one of the Answers to Your Deepest Longings, 40 Days Through the Bible. We are so excited you're joining us. Let me introduce you to myself and some of my friends here. My name is Kendra and I am the manager of online Bible studies. This is my co-host all study long, you guys. You're gonna see us on every single video. That's right. um, and her name is Hannah Schindler. She is our senior project coordinator for First Five. And then over here, we have our Director of Theology and Research, Joel Mutamale, and we are so excited that you're joining us for week one. I know, this is amazing. I can't I mean, believe it. Come on, how exciting, right? And so everyone, this is our first ever designed, written, produced study guide that we've ever done within Proverbs 31 Ministries, and I think we're all a little bit excited about it, right? Oh my gosh. I can't believe it's finally here. I know, you guys have been writing it for a very long time. <laughs> we sat around a round table <laughs> with Google Docs and our computers and random pieces of paper and Bible commentaries, and it is just, I cannot even fathom the fact that we've got that now, and so, so exciting. Yeah, it's very awesome. And so Hannah, before we get into anything theological that Joel can answer for us, can you explain how this study is relevant to us. Yes, so I'm gonna ask you guys, but I want you to ask this to yourself or maybe answer this at home. So have you guys ever wondered or thought that there's something missing from my life? Joel, what do you think? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> like right now I'm missing a lot of basketball, <laughs> you know? But yeah. It, yeah. We all long for something. We long for something. Yes. yes. Yeah. I think about it all the time. We were just talking about Cheetos. I could get down with it. <laughs> right. And you may be missing Cheetos or maybe there's something else that you're missing from your life right now. And so there are these unmet expectations that we have in our lives. And so um, in this study, we are calling them our longings or desires. And what's so amazing is that's something that's missing from our life gets to be fulfilled in Jesus. And so we are not alone, even in these places where we feel isolated or we feel like something is missing. Jesus is there to fulfill that place, that missing place. And so that is what we are going to be studying through this through this study together. Yes, and we're so excited you're on this eight week long journey with us. And so Joel, we're gonna turn it on you for a little yeah. bit. All right, so could you explain to us a little bit about why these longings, why we're even studying these longings and what they have to do with the Bible? Yeah, um, I think one of the important things that we have to do is turn to the opening pages of Genesis. Mm -hmm. And I, I know for me, before I really studied and got into Genesis, I always just skipped by, you know, chapters one and two. Mm -hmm. I right. went straight to the fall. And then I'm like, oh, everything's in trouble now. Yeah. Like we really need Jesus. Um, and yet there's this theological phrase called protology mm -hmm. and protology is the study of first things. Mm -hmm. um, and we really need to study and look at what was God's intention for humanity in the garden of Eden. And this is kind of what I've come to find throughout my study of Genesis, that God had a specific uh, destiny mm -hmm. and equipped humanity with the dignity mm -hmm. uh, and our dignity, both Adam and Eve, man and female, have the image of God. And so uh, Eden was a starting place, yeah. right? I, know, I don't know about you guys, but I think sometimes Eden is like the goal, right. you know? We want to just go back to Eden. Yeah. But interestingly, when we turn to the very like end of Revelation, Revelation chapters 21 and 22, we find that Eden has become this beautiful garden city. You know, uh, and so I think one of the things that we're trying to identify in in our study is that from Genesis chapter three, the desire to move forward and to fulfill God's command and his vision for humanity as faithful citizens of the kingdom of heaven um, is something that is deeply embedded inside of our hearts. And yet, because of the fall, we can't not deal with the reality of the fall. We begin to go sideways on things, and but God is just so gracious to point us back to the true source of our satisfaction and ultimately where that destiny is intended to go, which is ultimately Jesus. And so that's really kind of our study. And we'll find that longings, they impact every aspect of our life. Mm, that's awesome. That's so that's great. Good. And so for this week, we are going to be talking about the longing for purpose. And so Joel may not have said that word, but just now thinking of what he was talking about, there was an initial purpose and design in the Garden of Eden, but because of Genesis 3 in the fall, obviously we went off kilter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who says that? What theologian? Augustine. Augustine. Good job, Hannah. <laughs> I'm remembering things. Yeah. And that, are you impressed? I was, really, I was so <laughs> taken aback by that. Well, so yeah, I've learned some things from studying with Joel, but so, we are going to really see the longing for purpose this week through our study. And so we're so excited. 
But we have something really fun that we are going to do every single week. I'm pretty amped about uh, it. Right? Yeah, I'm pretty stressed. Yeah. And he's stressed. I, I know, I'm already sweating now. already for him, you guys. So <laughs> go ahead and get ready. Every single week, we are going to do what's called 60 Second Theology with Joel. Yeah. And so we are going to be asking Joel these questions every week, and he has 60 seconds to answer it. By the way, I heard that Lisa did a 60 second she did you know, he's challenged I, her okay and i she know i know i know he i know he challenged apparently she did it within the 60 seconds she did but i think we need to recount that timer because i think she might have been a little bit oh, I don't know. competitive we'll have to look I'll let see. You work that out we'll figure that out yes yeah, so joel is going to have 60 seconds i know you have a disclaimer so i'm going to yes. ask the question first yep and then you I'm going to give a little bit of a disclaimer, and then we're going to... We'll and then we have the timer have on the my timer phone. Yeah, and I'll show it. Okay, yes, right. you're going to show... They're going to see it. Well, yeah. we're going to put a timer up on the, right. on the clock so they can see it. Okay, so the question is, how did Satan go from a favored angel to a fallen angel? Okay, so this is my disclaimer. Um, when it comes to this topic, there are different positions and there are different views. So I'm going to give one uh, that is a strong, I believe, a very strong view and strong idea. There's an Old Testament scholar by the name of Gordon Wenham um, who kind of holds to this. Uh, but I do want to just, if you're like, wait a minute, I think I might have heard something different. It's very possible. Um, and this is one of those things in Scripture that we have a lot of information around, um, and yet there could be a couple different possibilities. But I'm excited to maybe... Point us towards one of those. All right, yeah. you ready? I'm ready. You feeling good? Yeah. All right, ready, set, go. We actually have to turn to two different Old Testament passages, Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28. And in Isaiah 14, we have this interesting uh, dialogue of a human ruler in Isaiah 14. It's actually the king of Babylon in Ezekiel 28. It is the ruler of Tyr. And behind the human ruler is a spiritual ruler. The spiritual ruler is Lucifer, is Satan. Now here's what's crazy. Uh, Satan is described as somebody who has a lot of pride, envy. He uh, thinks of himself really high and lofty. And so these two biblical passages point to a fall that he's cast out of heaven and he goes on to earth and as a result of that um, he no longer has his favorite uh, position and status. A couple different thoughts of who uh, Lucifer as an angel could be. It could be a cherubim or it could be an archangel. I think it's a cherubim because of the fact that he was in the Garden of Eden and then Eden he has to leave uh, and then cherubim are placed in Eden afterwards. Woo! Uh, okay, <laughs> you got it. 59 <laughs> seconds, legit, it didn't even go off. But when you said a couple thoughts, I was like, all right, he has 15 seconds left to give I know I'm not thought. supposed to do this. quick question? Yeah, yeah. What is a cherubim? Yeah, yeah a cherubim is an angel, is a okay. type of angel. So there are different types of angels. This is like bonus, 60 second theology <laughs> yeah, plus. Uh, there are different types of uh, angels. There's cherubim, there's seraphim, there are archangels. There's a really good chance that I think that actually Lucifer was a cherubim. Um, cherubim probably the higher ranking ones. And also Augustine and Anselm thought that uh, Lucifer's issue was pride. Mm -hmm. Um, and then Tertullian and Justin Martyr, old, some old church fathers, they thought that it was envy. I think it's pride because pride actually has the fruit of it is ultimately envy. Mm. Okay, there you go. In that's terms bonus. of why did he fall? Yeah, that's a bonus, everyone. Bonus content for y'all. Yes. That was good. So every week we're going to see 60 Second Theology with Joel. <laughs> we think that's going to be a lot of fun and just kind of brings theology, I don't know, to your everyday gal, right? Yes. So yeah. it's yeah. exciting. All right, everyone. Well, there are three things that you will need for a successful study. Number one is a study guide. So this is what we were talking about at the beginning. This is what was produced and designed and written by a team at Proverbs 31 Ministries. And like Lisa said, it's not just a book of questions. I mean, there are beautiful, so beautiful. imagery and graphs and all the things in here. So it's beautiful. So you're going to want to get that Proverbs 31 bookstore or p31bookstore.com. The second thing is our study at a glance. And for our first five friends, that's your reading plan. Mm -hmm. So you can see everything you need to read and what's coming up in your study. And then the third thing that we want to encourage y'all to do is just have a willingness to learn and mm -hmm. dedicate time to reading the mm -hmm. word of God. Because yeah. something that we love here at Proverbs 31 Ministries is when you know the truth and live the truth, it changes everything. And that is the truth of God's word. So we know it's very important and we get to dive into it all together um, in this study. So we hope you have a wonderful week one and we're excited excited to join you back week two and we're also excited to see how you do with 60 second theology Woo. i mean that's worth, the, worth it just to come back yeah. yes. worth the yes. press of admission right there <laughs> all right everyone so from our gene team we all have gene on yes. today gene team. that's right when you know the truth and live the truth it changes everything bye y'all <laughs> <laughs>